It's finally here. After a several years of rumors, promises, whispers, a replacement for the ALP-3 is now the ALP-4. We're gonna go through this box. Um, we're gonna go through the owner's manual. I'm gonna go over what to expect if you're buying a new ALP-4 system. This is great for someone who already has an ALP-3, like 3P or 3H. Um, this is great for someone that's new to air suspension. This is a great starter. Um, I'm gonna go over all those reasons. I'm not gonna make any fancy cuts, edits, scripts. We're just gonna wing it here and we're just gonna talk about it because this has been a long time coming and I have not personally used this in a car yet. I've used several of the 3H, which is the ALP3, um, but not the 4 yet. So this is gonna be a pre-use video. Still gonna be very informative. We're gonna talk about a lot. Um, first off, uh, I'm Braden. I own Cruise Industries. I've been doing air suspension for 25 years now. Um, I've seen a lot come and go. So when new stuff shows up, it's pretty exciting. Um, the 3P had been around for several years, um, the ALP3. And now with the 4, we see some new upgrades. What are those gonna be? Let's find out. Um, let's open this thing up. This all is like the same packaging that you're gonna see with the ALP3. Because there's some familiar things you're gonna notice and there's also gonna be some new things. All right, so off the hop, same thing. This is for your install kit. This is gonna have butt connectors, uh, hose cutter, all that stuff. Um, something I'm not showing in this video, there's another box that has um, some fittings, it has water traps, it has airline. It saves you a lot of money because it helps you with most of the install. Um, pieces you're gonna need are gonna be in that box. It's the same as what came with the ALP3. Wasn't really necessary to show, but know that that still was included with the ALP4. Um, pricing, this is a few hundred dollars more than the, a, uh, the ALP3 currently is. Um, there are upgrade options, which we'll go over here in a little bit too, but let's get right into this. So get all this stuff out of the way. We'll start with the most obvious. So what's unique to the ALP3 and the four is with most air suspension systems, you're gonna have valves, which raise and lower the vehicle. And those are kind of its own separate thing. And then switches will just open those. Or if you have a system like the RideTech system or the AccuWare system, those are a brain which control valves. But with Airlift, what's really cool is this is the valves and the brain. So the ECU, which means the processor, the RAM, all that stuff is in here, the wireless antenna, it's all in here. So installing this is very easy because it's just one harness that plugs into here and this handles pretty much everything. Uh, it's great. So this new model, as some of you probably already noticing, uh, the top is completely different. I'll cut to a picture here. So these actually are light, these light up with LED and you can customize whatever color you want. Um, they're giving you an option to put your badge on here. I assume they're not installing this because it gives people like us, like a shop, I could make one of these with my shop logo. Maybe your car has a nickname or some type of logo. You could put this on here and show this off in your trunk, uh, which is pretty cool. So that's the first thing I'm noticing that's different and cool. Um, everything else looks the same. Uh, Airlift recently started offering these MPT ports. They used to have these built-in cartridges with a PTC, which is a push to connect, where you just push the airline in. But those, if they go bad, or they're not really replaceable. It's kind of a warranty thing, you gotta send it in. But with these MPTs, it allows you to easily change out the fittings if you do have an issue, or you can even use AN fittings or some type of special fitting if you're trying to hardline and really show off. So um, yeah, and then you've got a dump here. So where the air comes out, you can actually add a muffler or a slowdown, um, which is pretty neat. So. Speaking of slowing down, this new unit has a pulse system. So what that's promising is you can slow down how fast the car comes up. The way I could kind of um, predict how that's gonna work is if you go up instead of it just filling and opening and closing, so a shh and shut off, I think it's gonna do like a like a pulse. So it'll slowly raise the car up and slowly make adjustments, which Pretty smart, honestly, because usually the only way to control those speeds is to shrink your airline, or you could put a fill, um, a fill control, so it's like a like a valve, so you can pinch down the size of the uh, orifice of the airline to slow that down. But it kind of would only slow it down up or down, um, so it's pretty neat built into it. Uh, 
Features we're gonna notice that are dif different on this. Um, this has got a processor that's 3.5 times faster and RAM that's 20 times larger. Now, why would RAM and processor speeds matter with your air suspension? Well, this thing's a little brain and it's inputting information, whether it's from height sensors or it's the pressure, it's gotta operate the wireless system. There's a lot of functions going on. And the last system could get a little overloaded and would kind of lag a little bit. Um, this is promising to be much better. So another thing is there's a, uh, a term called hunting. So say you raise the car, um, it puts air in the bags, and now it starts to kind of guess and it's pulsing and going up and down. This promises that that's gonna go away. So there's less hunting with this unit, which is pretty exciting. Um, I also assume the pressure sensors are now going to be different. Um, the 3P, the ALP3 was kind of riddled with a lot of warranty issues. We had to do a lot of them for the pressure sensor errors. This is hopefully fixing that with the new system. Um, let me look at my notes here. Uh, there's so much to talk about. Uh, the LED, uh, let's see, anything else about this? Uh, better wireless range. So another thing was you can connect your phone to these. Um, the wireless range wasn't the best, especially if you had a big car and had to go through a lot of metal. This is now going to boost the wireless range. So you're not gonna have those issues anymore. Um, yeah, so there's that. Let's move on to the most exciting part of this and the thing everyone was waiting for the most. So this is the new controller. Now the new controller, as you're gonna see, the first obvious thing is touchscreen. So the whole top half of this is not just gonna be a display, it's actually gonna be an interactive touchscreen. It's gonna have menu diving, it's gonna have presets, it's gonna have all types of stuff and you can use your air system based on the screen. Uh, also on the bottom are these tactile buttons. So these buttons, you can program to do whatever you want. Say you want this to be preset number two, program it. Say you want this to be all of them up in the front uh, or all the car down, uh, or you want just front up or just front down. Um, you can set all this up to however you want, which is pretty cool. Uh, this is also significantly larger. It's probably, mm, I'd say 20, 30% thicker than the old one and it's got some heft to it. This is not a cheap item. This is a quality piece hold, I'm holding here in my hand. Uh, it looks like there's some type of LED up here. I don't know what that's for. Maybe that's for remote. Not quite sure yet. Um, I do know that your the old system, you had five, or sorry, you had three heights. You had a low, medium, high, or whatever you wanted to set those to. It's now gonna have five, which is pretty cool. So you could have a, a really low, a drive height, which is gonna be common for like street, freeway, and then three, I always joke and call it the oh shit button. It's like, oh, steep driveway number three, just air me all the way up so I can get in. But now you got two extra ones, uh, which you could roll Cali style, front up, back down, um, whatever you want, you got five. You can also name them, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's just fun, or say you have a girlfriend or a wife or a friend that's gonna drive the car and they hit a button uh, with confidence they can know it'll say street driving or it'll say low, um, they'll know exactly what they're doing. So that's pretty awesome and super helpful. Um, these also, as the ALP3 had, has a rise on start. Start the car, a couple seconds later, it'll go up to whatever your primary height is. I don't know what it is on this unit. The old unit used to be preset two. So whatever preset two is, it would just air up and you just drive it um, and there's nothing to worry about. Um, this is a, out of the box, the base system is gonna be a pressure system. What that means is, uh, say you want right height number one, it's not necessarily a right height as much as I say it's a pressure memory. So say you want 60 PSI in the front bags and you want 40 in the back, that'll put 60 and 40 in there. But because of atmospheric changes and volume and a lot of physics and science, it will not be exactly say it's three inches the first time you set it and you air the car out and go back to 60 and 40. It may not be three, it may be two and a half, it might be three and a half, it's just the way the world works. If you bring the car all the way up and you try to drop it back down to 60 and 40, it'll put 60 and 40 in there. But because of the way volume and atmospheres work, it may be four inches off the ground now. So if that's something that is concerning, you can upgrade this to a 3H. The 3H comes with height sensors. Uh, you've, similar, you've seen that on the old system, the 3H system, but also companies like AccuAir have really made the height sensors very popular. Why are they popular? Is because they're very, very accurate. Um, 
I highly recommend them for people who have um, a wife, a girlfriend, a mom, a friend, you want them to drive your car and not have to worry. Those height sensors are never gonna let you down. Another thing is if your car, say it rests completely flat on the ground and you wanna hover and go an inch off the ground, those height sensors will put you exactly one inch off the ground. These pressure systems, it's a crapshoot, whether that's gonna be one inch. It might actually be half an inch. It might even touch the ground sometimes because of atmosphere and volume. So the system is great for what it is, for the price, you get so much in the box. Um, that's fantastic. I love that. But if you're looking for super accurate, um, what we found is running the quarter inch system. This comes with either quarter inch line or three eighths line. The quarter inch system works much better. Um, it is a tiny bit slower, but it, let's think of it like this. Um, think of a, a coffee straw, right? Very small. How much fluid could you hold inside of a coffee straw versus uh, a boba straw? Nice fat straw, right? That's gonna hold a lot more fluid. Well, that fluid is volume. And if you're filling from you this, uh, manifold all the way to your airbag. It's not just filling your airbag. It's filling the airbag and the airline all the way back. So if you have a boba straw, a three eighths line or half inch line, that's going to waste volume from your tank. And also this again, back to volume and atmospheres is going to be different. So with quarter inch line, less volume and atmospheres that are going to be affected. So I found that this system works really good. In fact, if you can get this system in the middle of your car, like we've done Escalades or uh, trucks, and we like to put them right underneath where you sit, that means all the airlines are going to hopefully be close to equal. Um, if this is say offset on the vehicle, a trick we like to do is um, one side will do an extra loop and then the other side will just come over so that way these airlines are even. If you can keep your airlines as close to even as possible and keep this in the middle with quarter inch, I have found the most success um, with these systems. We got pretty frustrated with them not being very accurate. We started using quarter inch line, much better. Um, but again, you have the height sensors to upgrade if you want it. Uh, let me check my notes. I know I wanted to talk more about learning algorithm. So as you drive this car, it's going to, you put this on your car, you drive it with it, it's gonna be learning. It's gonna be paying attention to how the car behaves. Uh, these also control your compressors. So it's monitoring how your compressors are running. Uh, there's a lot of learning going on. So this is uh, a new, better learning algorithm, which means the system is gonna work better, which means in the past you've had to say recalibrate after a month or two because you're getting frustrated with the system. That should hopefully go away with a better learning algorithm. Um, yep, and we talked about all of this, programmable buttons, the touch screen. Okay, so it's great. It's awesome. It's depending on the prices. I think I saw this is 1875 to get it with the height sensors. I think it's close to 2,500 ish. Um, prices probably subject to change with tariffs and all those wonderful things. Um, however, if you already have a three piece system, you can buy just the brain and just the controller for significantly less. Um, I'm even thinking about offering an upgrade program. If your controller is in good shape, everything works and functions right. Thinking about offering a upgrade even more. So say this unit is, I think it's like $1,400 with the controller and the manifold. We may be doing like a $400 inch store credit if we get to keep your old manifold and controller um, and maybe sell those things secondhand for you and make some money back. Uh, because we'd like to see people get away from the ALP3 and get into something new. Air suspension should be an enjoyable experience. It should never be a frustrating experience. If you're seeing errors or you're not happy with the performance, I always suggest to talk to your local shop, someone who is with experience, and they can help point you in the right way um, to get something that's gonna work for you and keep that frustration low. So let's see what it's got going on in the owner's manual. I see there's a lot of stickers and I'm gonna have to make a cut here because here comes an employee. All right, I promise no cuts, there's at least one. All right, is what it is. Uh, happens when you're the owner and everyone needs your attention. So let's see, bum, 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 bum. Anything interesting in here that we notice? Uh, no, uh, alerts menu, uh, no, all this stuff seems pretty similar to the last one. You're just going to have a color display. Oh, here we go. This is pretty neat. So the old system had this too. So if this is the regular orientation, 
there's an ability to mount this sideways. So say sideways actually fits better in your center console or underneath your dash. You can flip that around very easy. Back in the day, with, well not back in the day, but you know, the uh, ALP3, you had to actually remove the touchpad, turn it. You don't have to do that with this. That's, that's super handy and very convenient. Um, what else we got going on in here? Here's your adjustable pulse rate. So high, medium, low. Looks like you can set your fill and slow exhaust. So you can set all these pulse rates to be higher and low. So there we go. You can speed this up pretty easily just in the settings menu. That's pretty awesome. Uh, minimum drive heights, they've always had that where you can set up minimum uh, pressure so you don't actually touch the ground if you don't want that. Um, accuracy modes, here we go. We can make it try harder to be more accurate. You can put it in high, medium, and low. Maybe that goes back to what I was talking about um, with the air pressure never really being accurate. Maybe this helps with that. Maybe it now knows about the volume levels. We're gonna have to do a follow-up video, it sounds like. Uh, here's your height sensor stuff. You know, that's all the same as back in the day. Button configurations. Oh, here we go. Your button configurations. These bottom buttons that you can program, here are your options. Uh, all down, preset one, preset two, or all up. And then you have front up, rear up, rear down, all up, all down, and then your presets one, two, three, four, or five, or air out. So as predicted, you can set one to be front up, front down. Oh, wait a minute, actually. I don't see a front down, just front up. I see a rear up, rear down. Hmm. What's going on here, Airlift? They might need to uh, update this firmware because I just see a front up and a rear up and a rear down. No front down. Hmm, interesting. All right, we may have to follow up with that. Uh, well, look at this. We've got pressure specifications. Yeah, the other cool thing about these systems is um, the pressure switch for the compressors, which typically is on the air tank, is actually in the manifold. So you can set when you want these compressors to turn on. So they think they default at 150, but a lot of compressors run at 200. Um, say you want it 175. Say you want it 177, you save it in there. It's super programmable. Um, there's all your errors and whatnot. Okay, installation guide. It's probably all gonna look the same. Yeah, it all looks the same. Nothing special here. Yeah, I think that's kind of it guys. So. With that being said, um, if you already have a 3P system and you want to upgrade, or an ALP 3 system and you want to upgrade to the ALP 4, you can hit us up here, Cruise Industries. We're going to keep these in stock. We're also installing them. Uh, we've had many years experience installing air suspension and these airlift systems. So let us know. Just seeing if we find anything else interesting in here. No. Leak, leak testing and detection. That's pretty cool. Uh, I don't know if this is built in. It might just be a step-by-step, -step, but anyway, uh, that's it, guys. Uh, exciting. We've been waiting several years. I heard first murmurs of this a couple of SEMAs ago. Um, now, here it is in hand. Um, I will do a follow-up video once we have it on a vehicle and let you know how that works. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. We're Cruise Industries. We're here in Ventura, California. Uh, all our contact information is on our website, uh, and you can find that down below. We'll see you next time.